A lot of people have come up to me and asked me the question of what it is that they should do to properly prepare for patch 1.7. Uh, as you might know, ever since patch 1.4, every time that a patch has come out, I would pretty much have my build ready the next day or maybe the next two days and I have a video about it. That is one, because of course I tier recraft and test the builds on the PTS, so I kind of already know what I want to go for, what's good and what's bad. But also, and probably the most important thing, I do a lot of things to prepare for each new update. The healer build video that I posted a few days into 1.6 for example, uh, that build was created using mostly items that I already collected in 1.5. Now of course this was possible because of a lack of a gear score increase. In patch 1.7 we will have classified gear sets obtained through a new type of currency only available during the global event. So one would say that you can't really do a whole lot to prepare for this patch in particular. And although you're definitely not wrong, there's still a few things that you can do to go into 1.7 as prepared as possible, and that's what I want to show you today. So uh, let's begin. First up, we're going to talk about the Ninja Bike Backpack. For those that haven't caught up to the new set, the Ninja Bike Backpack will get a rework in 1.7, and that rework is going to make it one of the better items in the game. Basically, what it will do is add plus one to every gear set item that you have equipped. So uh, if you're wearing two pieces of Tactician and three pieces of Deadeye and the Ninja Bike Backpack, well, now you will get the bonuses for the three-piece Tactician and the four-piece Deadeye. Same goes for having five different gear set items. You can end up with having five different two-piece bonuses. Sounds pretty cool, right? So uh, why don't we farm it? Well, that's because currently it's impossible to get the Ninja Bike Backpack in the game because the developers removed it from the loot pool because... Well, because it used to be really, really bad and people complained about it that they would grind out their exotics only to be rewarded with the Ninja Bike Backpack. So it's you can't actually farm for the item right now. Which leaves us with two types of players. The players that actually have a Ninja Bike Backpack and for some reason never sold or deconstructed it, hoping it would ever get buffed. And you have those type of people that do not have a Ninja Bike Backpack because they either never got one or they sold all of them because they were so bad. I myself, I currently fall into that second category. I do not have a backpack because I sold them because again, they were really bad. And now I'm going to have to farm for one once again. And for anyone that finds themselves in the same boat as me, I've got some golden advice for you because once these Ninja Bike Backpacks are added back to the exotic loot pool, you will once again be able to get them as drops from bosses and from exotic caches. And we all know that exotic caches are things that we can farm today. The way to get an exotic cache is either to complete an incursion on heroic difficulty or a mission on legendary difficulty. The thing is, you can only get this reward once per week. Still though, there are four different incursions in the game and there are three different missions which can be played on legendary mode. That is seven exotic caches a week. Of course, take in mind that if you have more than one character, you can get these rewards multiple times. So for me, you know, I got four characters, so that's potentially up to 28 exotic caches a week. I don't know if I'll actually have the time to get that many a week every week though, but I'm sure that you can see that if you do this up until patch 1.7 actually drops, you'll have at least somewhere in the 100 exotic caches, which as soon as 1.7 drops, I'll have a chance to give you that ninja bike backpack. And if it doesn't give you that backpack, well, at least you'll be sitting on a lot of exotic items and I guarantee you that at least a few of them are gonna be pretty good. Now, if you do not have a decent group of players to farm these missions out with, or if you already have all those caches on every one of your characters and you still want more, well, in that case, you can also do the weekly challenges, which will also give you caches with a guaranteed exotic item. You can only get two of those per week per character though, so that's potentially up to eight extra. And they do take considerably more time to get than the other exotic caches that you get for uh, completing the incursions. The two weekly missions that you get are pretty much the same every single week. You have one that requires you to get a total of 20,000 points in the survival game mode. Now, my recommendation for doing this is going in with three or four people, rushing to the dark zone and clearing out all the landmarks as fast as possible. That will guarantee you 20,000 points in just a single run. And no, you don't have to last hit the NPCs to actually get the points. If you're close enough to each other as a group, everybody will get all the points for all the NPCs, no matter who shoots them or who kills them. I'd even recommend anyone to put the mode to PvP, mainly because you get a 1.2 point multiplier at the end of the run, so you don't even need to reach that 20,000 per se, and because PvE survival is usually pretty crowded with people stealing your kills and your points. 
If you don't like PvP, you don't really have to worry either. In the numerous times that I've played PvP survival in a group in these past few weeks, I've only met other players outside of my group once in one run, and that was when I was doing a duo queue with two people. PvP survival is pretty much dead if you search it with four people, since the servers don't really want to put you with the solo players, and there are almost no groups searching for PvP survival. That is the experience on PC at least. I'm not sure if it also applies to consoles, but it can't hurt giving it a try, right? The second weekly challenge usually involves killing some purple NPCs, getting some crafting materials from the open world and completing 10 missions. Now those 10 missions, they do get really repetitive if you actually want to do them for four characters, but I recommend anyone that still wants to do those to run Arma's apartment over and over and over again, because in this mission, you can just run past most of the NPCs right to the end, uh, apart from this one area where you have to kill two NPCs for the door to open, and then of course at the end where you actually have to finish off all the remaining NPCs. But yeah, this usually results in three to four minute runs, which yes, still amounts to about 40 to 45 minutes of repeating Armas Department over and over and over again, but hey, uh, I didn't say that all of this was going to be fun. You gotta do something if you want to get that ninja bike backpack. But enough about exotic and weekly caches, because that isn't the only thing that you can start collecting in preparation for 1.7. Uh, think about it for a second. If you create a build, if you want to make your own build, you aren't just looking at what gear sets you're going to run, right? There's much more to it than that. Uh, what main sets am I going to get? What weapons? What talents? Etc. 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 So. While it is true that we actually have to wait for patch 1.7 to farm these classified gear sets, you can, in fact, prepare everything else needed for the build that you want to create. And although that may sound very, very obvious, there might be a lot of things that you haven't really been thinking about yet. For instance, the classified gear will have main sets that are rolled a lot higher than the normal gear. It's pretty much like a gear score increase. Uh, of course, these values can still be adjusted, but the main sets on the site, you know, the ones that you don't spec for, are also getting an increase from 205 all the way up to 334. So while it is true that we're also getting a bit stronger overall wearing a full six-piece classified gear set, it will also allow us to get talents on our weapons that we would otherwise not have been able to get before. For me personally, it would mean getting competent, talented and harmful without needing that one firearms mod that is keeping me from fully specking into electronics on my healer build. But it could also mean that for the DPS players, it will be easier to unlock talents such as Unforgiving or Vicious without committing as much into stamina. It will open up a whole array of possibilities without being forced into lower gear score weapons or additional mods that otherwise could have helped you boost your other stats. So what I suggest is for everybody to look at what kind of talents you want and what kind of talents could work with your build and then start collecting the right weapons for those and the right gear mods so that when you finally get a full classified gear set in 1.7 all you have to do is dig into your stash and grab the items that you collected in advance and BAM! Your build is done. Of course, you can wait until 1.7 drops to farm all those things, but why would you? Why not just get those items right now so that you can fully focus on the global events when those are ready? Again, I'm not quite sure what you have in mind and what you want to try, but basically you can start collecting anything that you need to complete your build right now, apart from the actual classified gear. And if you do this, then you will find that you can just focus on getting as many global event tokens as possible during the global event to get as many classified gear items as possible. And then you'll be finished with your build not even a few days after the launch of patch 1.7. Last up, and this is really self-explanatory, but try to stock up on as much currency as possible. 5,000 Phoenix credits, at least a few hundred of every crafting material type, you will never know what kind of blueprints they might add and having the Phoenix credits and the crafting materials ready is always a good thing because that way you can focus on just getting those global event tokens while not missing out on anything that the shop might have to offer. By the way, if you don't know how to get those crafting materials fast, you can watch this recent video that I created. It shows you how to stock up on, well, a lot of materials much easier than normally. But yeah, other than that, I don't think I've got any tips left for you. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. I think I do because uh, my last tip for you is that you should clean up your stash a bit, uh, especially those lazy people that just hoard up every Everything and don't organize anything. When 1.7 drops, we will get three classified gear sets to start with. We will have Deadeye, Final Measure, and Lone Star. And uh, as we've seen in the video, the classified version of those gear sets are always going to be a lot stronger, pretty much making the normal version of those gear sets obsolete. So if you have any excessive amounts of those gear sets in your stash right now, 
uh, well, I highly suggest that you just sell or deconstruct them or, you know, get rid of them so that you have more space. And so that you don't have to sort all of that stuff out the moment that 1.7 actually goes live. It can save you a lot of time and also a lot of frustration if you don't know which items to sell and which items to keep. So yeah, uh, that's, that's going to be all for today. I hope it helped out at least a few of you guys. And as always, I will see you all later. Or like they say in the Netherlands, see you later.